Hey everyone, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I will show you two tools available in NSXT uh, for packet tracing and for checking out uh, the port connections. So first of all, before we start with the NSXT demo, let's take a look at the environment. What do we have? We have two clusters. This is my compute cluster with ESXi 4 and ESXi 5. I have several virtual machines. These virtual machines are hosted in this cluster. When I select my first VM, my App01 VM, I can see that this virtual machine is connected to a switch. In this case, it's a special switch because the switch is provided by NSXT. When I open this adapter, I can see that the VM is connected to an app logical switch. And this is a very weird icon. I never saw it before because it's an NSXT switch. Let's jump to networking and let's see how those switches look. So this is my app switch, my DB switch. There is an overlay switch, a network address translation switch and a web switch. These are regular switches and you can create them in the NSXT user interface or even with an API call. So these guys run next to the regular port groups from my ESXi hosts and next to the distributed switch with distributed port groups. But they look different. But you can attach virtual machines to those switches. Let's go into a, one of the ESXi hosts to see how it looks on the physical side. So each host in this cluster is configured with multiple network adapters. NIC 0, 1, 2 and 3 are used by the distributed switch. But when we scroll down a little bit, we can see that NIC 4 and NIC 5 are used by PROT overlay NVDS. So NVDS is an NSXT virtual distributed switch managed by NSXT. So it's running on ESXi, but it's managed by NSXT. You can also put one of these switches on the KVM hypervisor. So then you have a multi-hypervisor logical switch. We will look at that later on in the demo. So these two network adapters must be reserved for NSX. Uh, you can't run any other traffic on it. NSX is owning these two physical adapters. And on the NSX side, you can create a profile. And in this profile, you can define the fill over policies for these two adapters. So the other host has the same thing. We go to the ESXi 5 host. And when we scroll to the bottom, we can see that we have two network cards dedicated for the overlay network for NSXT. Let's jump to the NSXT side. So in the NSXT manager, I have a dashboard and this dashboard allows me to see if everything is up and running. So the system, the NSX manager is up and running. We have one controller node active. We have four hosts in the fabric, two edges, two, six transport nodes and two transport zones. Let's jump to those transport zones first because that's what we also saw in the ESXi host. This is the overlay network for Geneva, the global overlay transport zone. And this global overlay transport zone defines which hosts are allowed to talk to each other. So when I create a logical switch, for instance, the web logical switch, this logical switch is part of this transport zone. When I go to this transport zone, I can see that um, in my transport zone, all the hosts are present. Two KVM hypervisors, two ESXi hypervisors, and two edges for the north-south connection uh, to the outside. The nodes are hosts equipped with NSX kernel modules. So we have two KVM nodes equipped with open switch. And when we go to the nodes that are managed by vCenter, we can see that we have two hosts in uh, the compute cluster, two ESXi hosts, and we have two edges for the north-south perimeter. Okay, so the fabric is configured. We have logical switches configured. We can attach a logical switch to a logical tier one router. A logical tier one router is also a kernel module, and this logical tier one router can be configured 
with route advertisement so we can advertise the logical switches to the outside world. It's also responsible for first hop routing of network that originates from a logical switch. So this router is configured with those logical switches. When I go to the router ports, I can see that this logical switch, uh, the overlay network, the DB, the app and the web network are connected to this distributed logical router. When I go to the switches, I can see the switches. So this is the web switch and the web switch is used by the web VMs and it's connected to the logical router, the tier one router, and it's part of the overlay transport zone, the global overlay transport zone, which is using Geneve to transport or encapsulate traffic into the Geneve tunnel. The Geneve tunnel is running on every single host within the fabric. So when I go to Putty and I make a connection to my NSX Edge 01 and I do the command uh, get VTAPs, I can see the IP addresses of the tunnel endpoints of my ESXi hosts, of my edges and also of my KVM hosts. So let's make this a bit more visible and let's see what happens when, I, uh, when I'm communicating between virtual machine app 01 and this one is hosted on, let's see, on ESX4 and let's see what happens when I go to web 01 which is hosted on 05. So back to the NSX interface, we have a special section for tools and we're going to do a trace flow between those virtual machines. So I want to do a unicast trace flow between the virtual machine uh, app one to virtual machine web one. Okay, let's start this trace. So now the trace flow starts and is taking a look at the data path between those virtual machines connected to uh, different uh, logical switches. Uh, we can ignore this message because it's warning us about a nested environment. I know that we're in a nested environment. Let's start right here. So this is my virtual machine, my app01 with an ID, with an IP address, with a MAC address, all fine. It's connected to my app logical switch and it's connected to this port on the logical switch. The port is up, it has an ID, it has a name. We can see those ports. When you go to your switches and you go to ports, you can see which ports are created. When you connect a virtual machine to a logical switch, then the port is automatically created. This logical switch is also connected to a port on the router. So this switch is connected with a virtual cable to the router. The router also has a port and this is my gateway. So this is where I define the gateway for my app machine. And this is also the place where routing takes place. It goes from the app network to the web network because these virtual machines are in different subnets. Let me show you real quick. This VM is in 10.11 and the other one is in 20.11. Yeah, so this is where we're going from 10 to 20. We go to another routing port. Yeah, We go to a port on the switch. We go to the other port on the switch. The traffic is switched to the port of the VM and then we enter this VM. Interesting. Okay, so when we look at the physical world, we can see that this host has two physical adapters used by uh, NSXT. This is where my VTAPs are hosted. This is where my, uh, my overlay network starts. And these two network adapters are both configured with an MTU size of 1600 because that's what needed as extra address information when Geneva is uh, used. On the other host, I have the same situation. I have my two physical adapters, 4 and 5 used by NSXT. Let's go to the list, through the list. We can see that in step one, the traffic is injected into the network adapter of my app machine hosted on ESX4. I'm going to the kernel modules for the distributed firewall, which is also, also provided by NSX. So when I go to the firewall, I can see that there is one rule and this is the any any allow rule. That's also what we saw in uh, the trace. 
in the trace flow. So this is the rule ID2. Then it goes into the switch right here. It goes into the router. It's routed to the web network. It goes into the web switch. Uh, it's forwarded to the other host. This is my Geneva tunnel endpoint. And these are the VTAPs I showed you in Putty just moments ago. 151 and 152. So here is Putty. This is 151 and this is 152. So those are the Geneva tunnel endpoints. Uh, they should be called GTAPs instead of VTAPs. But those are the tunnel endpoints where the traffic gets encapsulated. So the encapsulation takes place with the Geneva protocol. We have a local IP and a remote IP. So the traffic is routed first and then when it's routed to the correct network, it's put into the Geneva tunnel. And once it reaches the remote host, it can go directly into the virtual machine because it's already in the correct uh, network. Let's take a look at uh, the port connection tool. It's similar to the trace flow and in port connection we will trace the path between my DB VM and my web VM. So the DB VM is hosted on a KVM hypervisor and this DB VM is connected to the logical switch DB and what we see is that the traffic is going from this hypervisor into the web VM and then the traffic is tunneled by these VTAPs and then it's accepted by the web VM. So even though this virtual machine is hosted on a completely different type of hypervisor, this hypervisor is prepared with the open vSwitch kernel module and it's still able to participate into this whole uh, overlay network. The overlay network is also connected to the edges. So to go through the real world uh, from overlay to VLAN, you can connect an edge to an overlay network and to a VLAN network and then you can go to your production. Well, this was Eric Sloof signing off and have fun with NSXT. Bye bye.